This is the image analysis for the wrist. Let's start with the PA uh, hand, wrist projection. Image analysis guidelines for the PA wrist projection state that the owner styloid should be in profile medially. The radial styloid is in the profile laterally. The radial ulnar articulation is open. Superimposition of the metacarpal bases is limited. The radioscaphoid and radiolunate joints are closed. Anterior and posterior margins of the distal radius are not superimposed. The second through fifth carpo-metacarpal joint spaces are open. The long axis of the third metacarpal and mid forearm are aligned. The lunate midpoint is positioned distal to the radial ulnar articulation. The carpal bones are at the center of the exposure field. And the carpal bones, one fourth of the distal ulna and radius, and half of the proximal metacarpals are included within the exposure field. Here is a slide with the patient in a PA uh, positioning for a wrist. And I have included those image analysis guidelines within the presentation. So let's talk about identification of rotation in a PA wrist projection. First, I'd like to remind you that um, in anatomical positioning, uh, this side is considered your lateral wrist, and this side is considered your medial wrist, especially when we're talking about anatomical, um, these anatomical terminology in this um, identification of rotation. So when there is uh, external wrist rotation, the medially, which are these bones over here, located carpal bones, and the metacarpal bases demonstrate increased superimposition and decreased carpal joint space visual, visualization. The laterally located carpal bones, which are the ones over on this side here, And the metacarpal bases demonstrate less superimposition and increased carpal joint space visualization. Also, the radio ulnar articulation starts to close down here, okay? So we want, um, I'm sorry, the radio ulnar articulation starts to close right here. Now in internal wrist rotation, the laterally located carpal bones on this side here and the metacarpal bases demonstrate uh, increased superimposition and decreased carpal joint space visualization. The pisiform and hamate hook demonstrate increased uh, visibility on this side medially. Again, that radio ulnar articulation begins to close as well. So let's talk about wrist deviation. Um, in a PA projection, we do not want any wrist deviation. However, how we determine the deviation is um, anatomically. So let's first look at the, um, as you can see, this dotted line here. And I'm, I'm so great at making these arrows here. 
this dotted line here is demonstrating that we are in a PA projection when we know the long axis of the third metacarpal and the mid forearm are aligned. This positions the lunate here right over the radio ulnar articulation. So we are in a true PA projection. When we have, in the next image, radial deviation, uh, the wrist uh, results in the third metacarpal here, which would be here, okay? Uh, pointing toward the medial side of the wrist and it situates that lunate medially uh, so it is more distal to the ulna and demonstrates increased scaphoid for shortening. Now in ulnar deviation the wrist uh, results in that third uh, metacarpal cord pointing to the lateral side of the wrist and it situates that lunate laterally so it is more distal to the radius. So let's take a look at our first practice analysis here. In this image, we can see that the uh, third metacarpal is not aligned with the long axis of the mid forearm. Uh, that should automatically let you know that there is some radial deviation. Also, the second through third carpo metacarpal joints are closed. So there's a little bit of wrist um, um, elevation. You can also see that uh, your radial ulnar joint space is um, closed as well here. Um, so we need to make sure that we have that wrist in the true PA hand projection without any deviation or rotation. So let's look at our next practice analysis. The, in this projection, you can see that the medially located um, uh, carpals and proximal metacarpals are starting to superimpose. So this should indicate that there's some rotation here because um, nothing should be superimposing. We're in a little bit of rotation. Uh, also, our joint space, the radio ulnar articulation is closed, um, therefore we're in an external rotation in this projection. Also, the posterior radial uh, margin superimposes more than one-fourth of the lunate. So the forearm isn't parallel with the IR. It's actually elevated here. You see this articulation here is superimposing. So we need to make sure we're, um, we have everything in the same plane. There's no elevation of the forearm. It is, um, um, it is uh, uh, parallel with the IR. We want to Rotate that wrist internally until it is uh, in a P, true PA projection and depress that proximal forearm until the forearm is parallel. So let's move on to the PA oblique proje projection uh, in external rotation of the wrist. Image analysis guidelines for the PA oblique projection of the wrist state that the ulnar styloid is in profile medially. The long axis of the third metacarpal and mid forearm are aligned. The lunate should be at the midpoint is positioned distal to the radio ulnar articulation. Radio scaphoid and radio lunate joints are closed. Uh, 
anterior and posterior margins of the distal radius are not superimposed. Posterior radial margin superimposes no more than one fourth of the lunate. The second carpometacarpal and the scaphotrapezial joint spaces are demonstrated as open. Trapezoid and trapezium are demonstrated without superimposition. The trapezio-trapezoidal joint space is open. The trapezio-capitate joint space is closed. The fourth through fifth metacarpal mid shafts demonstrate a small separation between them. The carpal bones are demonstrated at the center of the exposure field, and the carpal bones one fourth of the distal ulna and radiant radius and half of the proximal metacarpals are included within the exposure field. And here are your image analysis guidelines for follow-up. Just like in the PA uh, projection, the wrist uh, may tend to deviate, and we want to reduce that deviation to uh, get a true PA oblique um, projection. Radial deviation occurs when the wrist results in the third metacarpal pointing toward the medial side of the wrist and it moves that lunate medially, so more than a half of the lunate is distal to the ulna. Ulnar deviation occurs when the wrist uh, results in the third metacarpal pointing towards that lateral side of the wrist, and this moves the lunate laterally, so less than half of the lunate is distal to the ulna. So uh, how do we determine insufficient wrist obliquity in a PA uh, oblique projection of the wrist? Again, we're going to have to look at the anatomical structures. First, let's take a look at um, the trapezio and trapezoidal um, articulation here. They um, are demonstrated as closed. Again, in the second projection, they are demonstrated as closed, this joint space, in insufficient wrist obliquity. Also, um, the trapeziocapitate joint here is demonstrated um, as closed. Not so much in this one, but in this one, you can see. Uh, less than one half of the trapezoid also will uh, superimpose over the capitate. And the separation between the second through fourth metacarpals up here, all these bones here, are almost equidistant. So this should let you know we are insufficiently rotated. This um, this articulation, this is more of a PA projection, is open where it should be closed. Uh, this first uh, projection is a uh, PA projection uh, with about uh, less than 45 degrees. It's probably, I would say, maybe 10 degree rotation, if that, whereas the letter B is probably just shy of 45 degrees, maybe at the 20 degree to 30 degree mark of rotation, we're not quite up high enough in the second projection. Please refer to part two for the excessive wrist obliquity.